Greetings and welcome to the lecture for Intro to Social Work, Substance Abuse Services, uh, Chapter 8 in the first edition of the text. Um, and uh, this is going to talk about the history of social work and substance abuse issues, as well as how the field has developed over the years. In 1917, Mary Richmond developed an interview guide for social work and families with substance abuse problems. 1957, Jay Sapir. Uh, encourage social workers to change societal basis biases about alcoholism and then in 1970 the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse is created to support research related to alcoholism in 1971 the Center for Social Work uh, Excellence publishes first social work guide for educators uh, to support development of courses on alcoholism and then during the 1990s social workers developed community-based treatment programs and uh, in like I've said before in many of your substance abuse facilities a social worker will be a vital part of the team uh, the roles of a social worker in substance abuse and as many as 70 percent of social workers include work related to substance abuse in their practice or at least uh, working uh, with comorbidity or dual diagnosis uh, where there is substance abuse and domestic violence, I'm sorry, substance abuse and mental health um, issues that are intertwined. Social workers are a part of the treatment team with your uh, doctors, your MDs, your PhDs, uh, and also with your uh, LPCs and your LCDCs. The, the assessment uh, is primary alcoholism uh, the person lives to drink secondary alcoholism is a response to mental illness where the person will drink for normalcy and then uh, reactive alcoholism response to trauma uh, it would be where someone drinks as a result of unresolved underlying issues the DSM diagnostic statistic manual differentiates between abuse and dependence Alcohol abuse is uh, any one out of five categories, and then dependence is three out of seven. Audit is an internationally used questionnaire. It's an audit form that helps for someone, to, uh, for a social worker to evaluate if someone has a serious alcohol or drug abuse issue. Social work rules, roles in substance abuse. Um, social workers will work as uh, prevention in the community, as well as working for prevention and intervention. Uh, they're going to work to help to develop a customized program to clients' need, cultural background and goals. They're going to work with individuals, groups, and families, monitor medications, and work with the psychiatrist or the MD to make sure that they report any variances in uh, the symptoms, work in both inpatient, residential, and outpatient clinic settings, develop community prevention programs, uh, DARE and other programs that are out there uh, are greatly in part by, due to the work of social workers. They're going to reach out to underserviced and difficult to service groups such as homeless, mentally ill, or poor, and provide case management services. It's important to keep in mind that um, a lot of times when you see social service agencies out there, uh, these agencies were formed by social workers or as a result of research that social workers did. Um, I, many times I've spoke of here in the area, in the North Channel area, we do have uh, a high poverty, le poverty level in Cloverleaf and Channel View, um, and uh, there are a lot of homeless people, and there has been a, a great deal of work done in this side of town uh, to make sure that uh, people who are um, on the streets uh, are at least provided clothing and food. Many times these people don't want to come off the, she the streets um, and uh, all you can do is try and help them to uh, have access to food, clothing, uh, restroom, showers and such. Many times people uh, of this um, mindset with dual diagnosis who maybe they're off their medications and they're um, self-medicating many times these people will uh, identify more with uh, being uh, able to use alcohol or other drugs to deal with their symptoms government resources for prevention and treatment National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and National Institute of Drug Abuse support research on prevention and treatment of alcoholism and drug abuse uh, there's quite a bit of grant money out there for prevention uh, and uh, social workers uh, when we get in a few more lessons and talk about uh, grant writing you'll see 
that uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, resources that can be tapped out there for grants for this. CSAP focuses on prevention of programs and operates a national clearinghouse for alcohol and drug information, which is uh, through SAMHSA, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, provides funding for best practices in substance abuse treatment or research to be done for best practices. School social workers implement prevention and intervention programs in public schools. Okay, um, there are several models that social workers work off of. One is the harm reduction model, grounded in the strengths-based perspective, looking at uh, client strengths and areas that they are already functioning well in. Uh, public health approach to intervention. Clients control decision making. Uh, this allows us to have fewer drug addicts, uh, as well as uh, the social workers will um, advocate a needle exchange programs to reduce HIV infection, uh, which will reduce it by as much as 30 percent. Uh, methadone treatment, uh, which weans addicts off of heroin, and that's uh, sometimes a um, very controversial a treatment method because uh, many substance abuse counselors will argue that you're just taking a client off of one drug and pitting them onto another. Uh, also, there are 12-step programs, give control to a higher power, uh, which includes weekly self-help groups, uh, which are available worldwide, specialized for special populations, as uh, um, you will find. There are Alcoholics Anonymous for those who are alcoholics, Al-Anon for family or friends of alcoholics, al for adolescent children of alcoholics, Narnon or, or NA Narcotics Anonymous for abusers of narcotics, Narnon for their families or loved ones, and then there's uh, AA Adult Children's um, of Alcoholics or ALCO, which is the adult children of alcoholics, uh, people who have grown up in uh, a home with an alcoholic who uh, then would uh, carry on some of those symptoms into adulthood. Uh, Evidence-based practices, also known uh, or uh, Empirical research findings, also known as evidence-based practices. Um, it's important to consider what works for whom under what circumstances. Inpatient treatment followed by AA meetings is effective if chosen by the clients. You have to make sure that the AA approach is effective for the client. Those with good intellectual functioning and a stable support network are likely to be successful in outpatient treatment. Uh, someone who has a good job, someone who has stable home life, and not a lot of triggers to use would be appropriate for outpatient. Someone who's tried a outpatient and failed many times may need to go into residential, and someone who has done residential several times may need a more restrictive or long-term type residential. The harm reduction approach works to reduce harm to the addict as well as those in the addict's life, those who are affected by the addiction. And those would be, uh, can be considered family members or those who enable the uh, addictive behavior by supplying money or access to uh, substances. Some high-risk groups for substance abuse, women who have been the victims of trauma or domestic violence need to be empowered. 12-step programs may not be effective because there may be a need for uh, a more uh, deep-rooted type of uh, therapy or intervention. Uh, unborn children of substance abusers are at the risk for fetal alcohol syndrome and the effects of drug withdrawal. Uh, many times we see in hospitals babies that are born and those babies would be born um, addicted to some type of substances. Substance abuse to youth are at risk for unsafe sexual activity, car accidents, drowning, or criminal behavior. And then members of the oppressed and discriminated fam groups often need specialized treatment that integrates cultural strengths and traditions. Um, and this is going to be uh, those groups of people who may have higher uh, risks due to cultural um, issues or they may actually have strengths in their culture um, and traditions that will help them to obtain and s maintain sobriety. Those with mental illness need uh, well-coordinated treatment approaches and that's where the social worker comes to play in the multidisciplinary team. Environmental risk factors. Um, low home ownership is linked to high drug use. Uh, it's uh, used as a measure of poverty. The American dream is uh, a, a car, a house, uh, and the family, and uh, many times low home ownership, uh, home ownership uh, will be linked to high drug use. Also, um, people who work in certain environments where drug testing is not a part of their employment, like those who may work in restaurants or in nightclubs or even bars where there's higher um, acceptance of the use of alcohol and drugs. Community participation investment are protective 
against high drug use. Social workers can advocate for policies that support urban development. Harm reduction approaches include provision of drug user friendly locations. Um, and uh, when harm reduction would mean um, that uh, there uh, would be a less of a uh, risky, uh, those who are using drugs would be encouraged to have uh, less risky behaviors um, in order to reduce their um, access to other types of STDs or other type of illnesses that would come with drug use. The history of the War on Drugs in 1874, Women's Christian Temperance Union is founded in 1914. The Harrison Narcotics Acts prohibited the use of narcotics for non-medical purposes. Keep in mind that before this time, um, the uh, heroin and cocaine and other narcotics could be purchased uh, from street peddlers. Uh, in 1919, passage of the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, prohibiting the manufacture and sale of alcohol, which was known as Prohibition, which was repealed in 1933. In 1956, Narcotic Drug Control Act allowed the death penalty for selling heroin uh, to minors. 1970, the DEA is created, Drug and Alcohol, I'm sorry, the um, Drug Enforcement Agency. And then in 1986, Anti-Drug Abuse Act created mandatory minimum sentences related to specific drugs. So the question here is, in closing with this lecture, have these laws worked and are the current treatment policies in the United States working. What I'm starting to see is, is that the original narcotics and original drugs and even prescription drugs uh, that are uh, being abused and then um, in order to get around the uh, placement of uh, drugs uh, the placement of restrictions on drugs that uh, were once popular, we have now with a lot of designer drugs, which the Designer Drug Act uh, states that any drug that has a similarly acting effect of another already illegal drug um, can be placed under that. Uh, but uh, as we've seen with bath salts and with uh, synthetic cannabinoids uh, over the past two years, that um, those chemists and those people, drug lords, drug uh, groups are constantly uh, looking for ways around the laws. This concludes the lecture and I will see you in the next lecture.